Hi, this is Dr. Gregory Sadler. I'm a professor of philosophy and the president and founder of an educational consulting company called Reason.io, where we put philosophy into practice. I've studied and taught philosophy for over 20 years, and I find that many people run into difficulties reading classic philosophical texts. Sometimes it's the way things are said or how the text is structured, but the concepts themselves are not always that complicated, and that's where I come in. To help students and lifelong learners, I've been producing longer lecture videos and posting them to YouTube. Many viewers say they find them useful. What you're currently watching is part of a new series of shorter videos, each of them focused on one core concept from an important philosophical text. I hope you find it useful as well. Among the positions of the Stoics that Cicero discusses in his work, The Stoic Paradoxes, one of the more counterintuitive ones is that only the wise are rich. We're often uh, tempted to split these things apart from each other and think about being rich as one thing, being wise as another. They could perhaps coincide in people who we see as rich and we think are very smart, you know, people who've made a lot of money recently. But we also see, you know, plenty of uh, less intelligent people who have inherited money or seem to have fallen into it through one way or another. So this seems rather uh, to go against our experience, right? When we talk about our experience of, of rich people and, and what we understand uh, based on, on what we see happening in the world. So how could it be that only the wise are rich? Part of what Cicero is doing in here is really working out what it means to have wealth. And, and what he's saying here uh, has a lot of really great points to it. You know, we have to ask, well, what does it actually mean to be rich? This is something that many people, uh, including uh, lots and lots of people who handle money for a living, never really think of. They, they don't really work out for themselves. Instead, they're, they're following their desires or they're following ideas that they inherited from, say, their parents or the culture or the, the workplace that they're in and the other people who seem to be doing great. Uh, and they, they don't really ponder this. What does it actually mean to be rich? Cicero says that it means to have enough property to be easily contented. And he says, well, this could be relative. You know, do you have a daughter? Well, then you need to have a dowry for her. We don't do this quite so much these days, although there is still the, the uh, uh, cultural habit of paying for a, a part, most of a wedding, right, uh, for, for a daughter. But this, this notion that, um, you know, you need to have enough set aside to deal with this daughter. Now, if you have two daughters, well, then you have to have twice as much set aside. Um, what if you had 50, like uh, in the old Greek legend? Well, that would be a really tough time. Now, it all depends on what you want to do with that money. If you think, for example, that setting aside that money is really important because what you need to do is have the wedding of the century, well, you need a lot of money for that, don't you? And then if you have another kid, uh, you'll need a lot of money for that as well. And, and on and on and on. And Cicero says this can go very, very far when people don't rightly consider what it is that they, they actually need uh, to be contented. You know, if you, for example, think that in order to really be contented, you need to have your own private army. Well, that's going to cost a hell of a lot of money. And, you know, even if we shrink it in, what do you, in fact, actually need? Do you need a certain size of a house? Do you need to drive a, a new car and buy a new car every other year? Do you need to go on vacations? Do you need to eat gourmet foods as opposed to buying the generic brand, which is typically the same thing, you know, just packaged differently? Um, we could go on and on and on asking these sorts of questions. Um, the key thing is what you need in order to be contented. Cicero is not saying that you don't need anything, but he's saying that we can actually be contented fairly easily. And he points out that really this is something that ought to be determined by ourselves, as he says, by our own judgment, not by the judgment of our neighbors, not by the judgment of the culture out there, 
that is constantly bombarding us with uh, inflated and contradictory messages about what we in fact need in order to be living the good life or to be contented or to think that we're doing all right. And we certainly don't want to take our cues from other people who are hyper competitive about these things or who are constantly on the make, constantly trying to acquire or those who put us down. We want to take our guidance from ourselves. We want to ask ourselves, what do I really need? And if we're honest with ourselves, we actually, if our desires are correctly aligned, we don't need that much. And if our desires aren't rightly aligned, perhaps that's a sign that we ought to be doing that. We ought to be going through that. Now he talks about those who we typically look at as being rich. And he says there's a lot of wealthy people who still keep on desiring more and more and more and more. The wealth that they have is not really benefiting them because it's not functioning as wealth. That's something to to consider. This is some really great wisdom. I mean, he's talking about the wise being rich here. uh, That's contained in this. The, The things that we think will make us happy or will be able to buy us the things that make us happy, if we keep on desiring them after we have them, that's a sign that they're not really satisfying. That's a sign that perhaps they're not even really goods. So what he says is these people are not rich because they're not satisfied. The wise person who realizes that the demands of the body are actually fairly small and that that what's required for us to engage in our social interactions is also similarly small. If we trim away, you know, worries about prestige and wearing the, the latest outfit or any of these other sorts of things, um, and we don't, you know, let people cow us into buying things we don't need. We, we actually can live on fairly little. Um, the rich uh, quite often don't do that. Uh, and, and it may be that they, they're worried about what other rich people think or what the, the other people who aren't rich, who are, you know, supposedly looking up to them think. Cicero says that these people actually lack abundance. They lack riches. They lack the very thing that they seem to possess. And this is a very, you know, nice phrase that, it, that he, he says here. Lacking, uh, lacking abundance means lacking uh, this, 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 you know, flowing of, of wonderful, good things for us. And, and part of what we have to do is be able to recognize what actually is riches. What are the things that we need? Perhaps it's books sometimes, but we don't even need that many books as opposed to, uh, you know, fine furnishings or the latest technology. Now, the last thing that I want to say about this particular paradox, something that Cicero points out that's really quite brilliant. Thrift is an income. What does he mean by that? Thrift is an income. If you can restrict your spending, if you're not buying more than you need, you are actually making money in the process. He gives you some really great examples. He says, um, you know, for example, this, this, this landlord over there bring in six times what mine bring in, but he adorns his country houses with gilt ceilings and marble floors and has an unlimited covetousness for statues, pictures, furniture, and clothes. So the return is scanty, not only for his expenditure, but even for the interest on his debts. It was possible to go deep into debt back then. Whereas my narrow income actually has something left over. And he says, um, you know, if we look at the the examples of people in times past, they they show us that. And he says those people could be a guide in life. Then he has some really great lines. Not to be covetous is money. Not to be led by your desires is to have wealth. Uh, Not to love buying things is an income. Contentment with one's own possessions is a very large and perfectly secure fortune. So precisely by being wise, we become rich and we, we end up possessing true wealth. 